Welcome to this edition of Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Dan Mal from the 91st Legislative District here in Adams County. Today, I'm with Devin DeMario and Dan Natupski uh, from the Fish and Boat Commission, and we are out along a stream here in Adams County, a secret stream that was just stocked, so we don't want to tell you exactly where we're at. And uh, you know, we're out in Mother Nature, enjoying life, and learning all about the, the trout stocking, the fishing, uh, you know, what the do's and don'ts are, and uh, just a little bit about trout fishing in general here in Adams County. I'd like to say welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you for joining me with, uh, with this monthly report. And, uh, you know, so I'll start with you, Dan. You're uh, relatively new here in Adams County. Yep. Uh, you're uh, fresh out of the uh, military, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to give us a little bit of background and what you've been doing and how you came into this? Sure. Uh, here. Sure. I'll pass this off yeah, I was uh, active duty military for 10 years, and I got this position back in 2009. My first assignment was uh, Northern Montgomery in Berks County, and I transferred here back in August of last year. And uh, so where we're at. Okay, good. Very good. Thank you. And Devin, and you are the legislative liaison Correct. for uh, the Fish and Boat Commission, mm -hmm. and that means that you work with. You. The House of Representatives <laughs> and the Senate right. as well. And uh, you let us know what we can and can't do and what we should vote on and what we shouldn't. Is that correct? I try my best. You try your best to explain it to us. Well, why don't you give us a little bit about your background. You're, you're a biology person, correct? Correct. I'll pass this on to you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, like, like Representative Mal said, I do have a background in biology. I completed my undergraduate degree at California University of Pennsylvania in southwestern Pennsylvania in wildlife and fisheries biology. Um, after that, I then worked for the Fish and Boat Commission up in the Linesville area. Um, and that's area one, so that was Erie, Conneaut Lake, Pima Tuning, which was a great experience, a lot of um, great fisheries resources there. And then I went and I moved on to uh, Penn State University where I just completed my master's degree in fisheries biology. So that's my, my formal training, um, my informal training. I've worked within uh, conservation organizations since, since about, um, I would say, 2002. And I held the chairmanship for the North Central Division of the Pennsylvania Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs, as well as the conservation chair for the Pennsylvania Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs. So that was my policy training. And I kind of mixed those both together. and. Um, and became the legislative liaison for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. So it was a great fit there, but thank you. Excellent, absolutely excellent. So I'm standing here with absolutely two professionals in the industry, and I'm about to learn a lot about <laughs> trout fishing. We actually went out a while ago, and this stream behind us was, was one of the streams that we actually stocked. And uh, I was impressed with the size of the fish that we put in. Uh, I, I saw quite a few fish that looked like they were at least a foot long, so, uh, you know, so fishing is good here in Adams County, uh, you know, so from a uh, conservation officer's perspective, what do you look for to make sure that that fishing in here in Adams County remains uh, a, a well used but not abused uh, family fun, relaxing uh, entertainment thing to do so that it stays this way in Adams County? Um, look for people to actually preserve the resource and actually take care of it and not abuse it. Keep trash out of the woods and the water because a lot of this is private property and landowners allow fishermen and anglers to come on and enjoy the, enjoy the fishing in the area. Uh, we rely on stocking help, which Adams County has a great group of guys. We have a group of 10 or 15 regular guys around here every stocking season at every stocking day. You know, they're out there float stocking. They really care about the anglers and the fish. And they're out there spreading the fish around, so all the anglers have a great, great fishing season. Um, Do you have much problem with people abusing, uh, poaching? Yeah, that's that's everywhere like throughout that. the state. We've, I mean, we catch poachers every single year, taking too many fish, or fishing early, or taking the wrong species of the fish at the wrong time of year, that kind of stuff. But you're always going to have that. Uh, I, I guess that in in your line of work, um, in your line of work, you run into people that. Uh, you know, some people make mistakes. Right. Other people just downright abuse it, and they yeah. know they've abused it, and they know they've broken the law. So it's up to you to decide, you know, how uh, how uh, 
diligently you want to right. uh, enforce the law. Uh, we certainly don't want to arrest kids out here that are just out for a day of fun and oops, right. they, they caught a type of fish they shouldn't have and they might not have known, but the guy that comes out here and catches 15 trout and he has them in his creel yeah, and he's heading problem. home, right. that's the guy that, that you're after. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you, do you run into a whole lot of that? Uh, quite, a, quite a bit actually in certain, certain areas more than others. I mean, I, for making honest mistake, I'll, I'll cut them a break usually, but I, you said if they're out there catching 20 fish over the limit, I mean, they're taking opportunities away from everybody else that's out here wanting to fish and do the yeah. right thing. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the things that I've been chasing uh, since I've been in the legislature um, is we, we have a little glitch in the system. You might not even know about it. Very few people actually do. And it only it happened to a gentleman that lives in my district, and he came to me with this complaint. So I'll, I'll pass it on to you. He bought a, a, uh, uh, a lifetime license. Mm -hmm. He was, when they, when they find him, he was actually 80 couple years old. And uh, he had moved from Pennsylvania to live with his son in New Jersey. But he came back to Pennsylvania for a visit. And with his lifetime license, he went out to fish. Right. But he had his, his driver's license now, believe it or not, he still had one, from New Jersey. So they actually fined him for uh, fishing on that license, and he was now a state resident. And right. to me, uh, you know, a lifetime, lifetime license lifetime. is lifetime. Right. It shouldn't matter right. where you yeah. live. And I'm trying to get that corrected legislatively. So that brings me back over to Devin. Slide in here next to me. So come from a legislative uh, perspective. Is that something, and I think you heard me mention something about that. I've been bugging the Fish and Boat Commission for, for two sessions now to make that change so that these guys would be legal, even though most guys like Dan here would never dream of arresting an 80-couple-year-old guy fishing on a lifetime license just because he's out of state. But in that particular instance, it happened. So if I want to pursue that, I need to get you for example to go to your boss and say hey guys what do you think should we should we work on this should we help representative mal get this piece of legislation done or is that something you think can be done within regulation um that i, I just put you on the spot didn't i <laughs> of course but that's what you do that's, that's okay. what i do that's okay um i would have to go back and check with our bureau of law enforcement on that and see if that would be something that we could change within our own regulations or within Title 30 itself. But that's something we it's could definitely discuss. It's a lot easier discuss. to do things in regulation than it is to do it in statute. That, of there's, course. There's you no know doubt that. about that. I've, <laughs> things can take years and years and years to do it in statute, but in regulation, somehow things can happen overnight if, if, you, if it's something you want to get done. Yes, sir. So I'll, I'll, I keep passing that hint along to the Fish and Boat Commission each and every year I say you know this is something even though it's very small it still needs to be corrected because I don't ever want to see that happen to again to an elderly person that's just here for a, a day of, of fishing now you catch that elderly person with 20 trout in his creel now that's a different find but for uh, you know, a lifetime license should be lifetime license no matter where you live if you paid for it here it should be good here even if you move out of state mm -hmm. right when you, I know you can't say I agree, but <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm beating this drum to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And and you also helped do a little trout stocking today, correct? I did. Yes, I did. And but I didn't see you get in the water. I actually jumped in the water, but you I've did. got my hip you waders did. on today, and I thought it was fun. That was the first time I've ever done anything like that. But then again, I didn't see uh, Trooper Dan here in the water either. Taking care of traffic, keeping people safe. <laughs> Taking care of traffic, keeping people safe out there. But, you know, when you look at a pristine uh, waterway like this, at least to me, this looks like it's pristine. And you guys have classifications right. for these waterways. How do you classify, and as a biologist, please chime in here anytime you want. How do you classify, you know, the grading of streams and what are those grading of streams? She could probably better answer that. Well, actually, there's two different classifications. Um, within the Fish and Boat Commission, we have a trout classification, which is based on how many kilograms per hectare or how many pounds per acre of fish that we sh sample out of a stream. Okay. Um, so those are our classification systems. And then DEP has their own classification systems that um, correlate with that. Do that now they work hand in hand with the Fish and Boat Commission to determine how to label a stream, whether it's high quality, low quality, or whatever. We do work together closely, correct. Okay. So 
how does how does fishing boat then i guess by the quality of the stream and the amount of water in the stream you determine how many fish to stock in the stream correct or it, make it hold right how many that stream can hold and i'm sure that that is formulas and yes, things that i certainly formula. would not understand and <laughs> you know you have to be albert einstein to figure it out but somehow you guys do and uh, and you come up with a methodology so if we wanted to get more fish into a stream let's say the anglers were uh were, were complaining saying hey there's not enough fish in our which, streams which, they do. which i'm sure they do <laughs> I, I, believe me i'm a deer hunter i've heard it all <laughs> but uh you know and and i'm sure that they do uh how do we how do we determine whether they're correct or you know i mean last thing we want is to see licensed sales decline any more than right. what they are we want to keep this a, a good family sport you know uh you know and if, face it if if kids aren't catching fish uh they're not buying licenses later right. so we want to make sure that they are what do we do to make sure that 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 we get the kids involved the kids, we, yeah right. i mean with with so many things that that we have out here today for to distract kids i mean back when you and i well i'm a little older than <laughs> you are but when i was a kid you had certain basic things that you could do now there's a million things for kids to do mm -hmm. especially with the video games and everything else yeah uh, you know you know, I want to see kids back on the streams. Right. You know, uh, you know because there are future anglers, and I, I don't want to see this sport uh, diminish. So uh, what would be your idea of, you know, helping to keep this successful? I wish I had a great answer for that. But, I mean, we do things. We have uh, special regulated areas up in Lattimore Creek, for instance, mm -hmm. a fishing area just for kids 12 and under. And we, we heavily stock it, and we put four or five hundred child just in that hole there for the kids to enjoy so they come out there and they catch you know 20 30 fish a day easy for them doesn't take much parents can help them out and they, it's just for kids so the guys aren't going to be in there throwing spinners getting their lines caught up it's for kids to learn how to fish and have a good time and a lot of clubs around here a lot of local sportsmen's clubs have fishing derbies they'll go spend their club money a couple thousand bucks and they'll get they'll get uh fish from private clubs to stock certain areas of the creek and just for kids only for a certain amount of hours of the day. And that gets kids involved because they go out and have a good time, they catch fish, and they enjoy it. But Do we have many areas in, around Pennsylvania? I mean, Lattimore is very close here, but do we have those sporadically throughout the state? Oh, yeah, state there, there's forward? multiple areas for kids in the state. I mean, so probably, they want to you know, fish, there's, 60. there's places for kids to Absolutely. go fish and have a great time. Yep. And and if you're looking for a place, you can always call your local sportsmen's clubs up, and they have dates of all the kids' derbies and the fishing events. Uh, I saw that with all the guys that yep. uh, that came along today with the stocking. Uh, I I realized just how many people because we had a we had a caravan yeah. of 30 cars or so in line of of people that wanted to be part of this uh, trout stocking today. So obviously there's a lot of interest in it. Absolutely, it's just that we got to keep it going because uh, and a lot of the local schools have a thing called. Uh, Trout in the Classroom program. It's a new program run by Trout Unlimited, mm -hmm. who Dave Swope's the president of, and they actually raise these trout in the classrooms, tanks, and they learn how to, you know, how to feed them and take care of them, the oxygen levels and all that kind of stuff. And they raise them to be, you know, so big, and uh -huh. they'll come to a stream like this, and we'll actually release them in, in the wild. Yeah, and that gets kids interested and learns how to fish and learns how the life cycle of a trout is and how long it takes to get big. And yeah, well, I'm, I was always kind of curious, how long does it take a trout to go from an egg to uh, say a 12 inch long brookie? Uh, a, year, a year and a few months. Yeah, at least. A little over, little over a year, yeah, they, a they can, they yeah, can do that. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of money and a lot of effort from all of employees here to raise these fish. People don't understand that. Then they go out and oh, yeah. use them, you know? Yeah, well, that's why we have guys like you right. to, to keep these waterways uh, protected and, and from people abusing them and, Absolutely. and make sure that it's here for the next generation. Yep. And as far as on your side, the legislative side, I understand that, uh, that your boss uh, is talking about uh, the possibility of actually lowering the price of a fishing license to try and encourage more people to, to get into fishing. Are you up on that? Yes, yes, I am up on that. That's definitely something that Executive Director Arway has been talking about. Um, but with consideration that all of pretty much all of our revenue is based off of fishing license sales as well as boat registrations. Um, and then we receive some federal funds based on the yeah, based on what we sell here. Um, so what our executive director is proposing is alternative funding 
um, to bring in an alternative funding source so then he can lower the cost of a fishing license. You want to let me in on what that alternative funding source might be? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, he was, he's interested in um, the Legislative and Budget and Finance Committee assessing water consumption, fees for water consumption um, for consumptive users because right now individuals, entities, industries that utilize the water out of the Commonwealth that's held in trust uh, do not pay for that water. So the people are not compensated in the Commonwealth for that water resource. Sounds to me like he's looking at the uh, well drillers for natural gas is kind of the, <laughs> the, the direction he's looking at there. Would, would that, did I hit that nail on the head? Or? Um, I'm not going to tell you no, <laughs> but um, they're only a small portion of the consumptive users in the Commonwealth. Um, what about what about people or boroughs that take their water out of creeks and streams to, to for water for their for their municipality? Would they be charged a fee? That's that goes back into the resource again. So that's not a consumptive that's use. That's not a consumptive use. Okay. Yes. Something that you you actually take water out but you don't put it back. Correct. Okay. That's a consumptive use. Well let's hope that uh, that we generate enough revenue for the Fish and Boat Commission to keep everyone happy and to keep streams like this right behind me here in Adams County, uh, a pristine family place to go, spend the day, catch some fish. And we have, even though you can't see it at home, we have uh, what was a campfire at one time uh, right in front of us. Uh, you know, so people are actually camping out, fishing, uh, enjoying the night, the day, and you know, and uh, and spend their time outdoors. Which, in my mind, that's what it's all about. And in, in my district here in Adams County, it just doesn't get any better than this. I, I want to tell you, we're very blessed to live where we do. I'm very blessed to have people that that work here side by side with me, like Dan and Devin, that 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 help us maintain the the community in which we live and and play in. So I want to thank you guys for you know, allowing me to spend time with you today and learn more about this trout stocking, and hopefully we'll learn more again in the future. Sure. And that's all the time we have today for this edition of Legislative Report. Please join me next time. I'm State Representative Dan Mal from the 91st Legislative District here in Adams County. My contact information will be on the screen momentarily. Thank you.